opportunity you guys have. Top 25 Alabama coming to Stegman. Yes, yeah. where it stands out in this. Yeah, exciting opportunity. Uh, the Steg ought to be rocking. We're fired up to tip it up. We're going to have great practice today. Um, Alabama's obviously really, really good, and they've been good for, for quite some time. Uh, good defensively, elite offensively. Um, great opportunity. We uh, Obviously, this is a very resilient team. You've used that term so many times yeah. to describe this team. But are we at the point, you know, from the standpoint of uh, the season that that, I mean, you said before it's, it's not good enough. You're not moral victories. You got to get across the line. What, yeah. What, yeah. Uh, what's how are you doing that? How are you trying to press that? Just learn from each game. You know, win or lose. Um, obviously, let an opportunity that we had a chance to capitalize on late in games. We'll get away a little bit. Uh, that said, though, um, with ten minutes left in the game. No one would have thought our guys would have put themselves in a position to do that. So, and Florida's very good. They're a tournament team. Um, we've got a bunch of opportunities ahead of us. We've got to continue to work uh, toward improvement, uh, both offensively and defensively. Stay together, stay connected, uh, and trust that uh, the results will take care of themselves. After watching the tape of that Florida game, just what were your takeaways from the defensive performance and what were the focuses the past couple of days to, to get things turned around for an Alabama team, like you said, that's elite? Yeah, defensive. we we really struggled defensively. Two of the last three uh, versus Florida, uh, excuse me, at Florida, at Kentucky. Um, some of it's transition, some of it's um, defensive rebounding, uh, some of it's just interior physicality. Uh, we just, we've got some stuff. We, we, we regressed a little bit here recently as we've taken some steps forward offensively. We've made a big jump in the past month offensively. Um, we've got to get back to improvements defensively without uh, the regression offensively now. What stands out to you about Alabama in transition, just the, the way they're able to get them? You know, they're fast and they're athletic. And, you know, a lot of teams in our league are, um, but their willingness to, sh to share it, uh, to, to, to space it and, and spread it out and, and keep the ball moving. Their skill level, of course, they're a really skilled team. They can play a couple different ways, uh, but they've got certain lineups where they're as skilled as, as anyone in our league. And, and Sears is having as good a year probably with Connect as, and I'm probably leaving somebody out, but I mean, he's having a phenomenal season, uh, both offensively and defensively. He does a lot of things for those guys. Passing and, and scoring, obviously, his percentages, his assist on ratio, his screening. Uh, and he's one of the best defensive guards in our league, too, in my opinion. How is Justin Hill? What, what is his availability for this game? I don't know. I don't know. Um, he won't go today. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, he didn't go yesterday. You know, we, we, we have, we've actually fight some illness, too. We, we, uh, we have a few guys that didn't go yesterday. Uh, we'll be down a few today. Hopefully, get closer to full strength tomorrow. We'll see. But uh, opportunities for other guys. Does that put a little bit more pressure on Silas if he can't go? Yeah, uh, Silas is battling some stuff too. Um, um, but it's you know that it's that time of year and it's, it's going around and um, you know whoever's available will be will be ready to tip it up and compete. Look at the way RJ played on Saturday. Just what sort of progression have you seen from him over the course of his first year here? Um, really settled in offensively. He's as confident as he played. We were playing small ball, of course, and he had he had uh, uh, good matchups at times when he was in space. Um, first couple fell for him, or, or those two that did fall for him, uh, I think led to um, again a, a gain in confidence level uh, from three. He's attacked the basket and drawn fouls and been active and been a really competitive defender for us all year, but. Obviously, his three-point numbers, you know, haven't been where we all expected them to be, including himself, because he's shot it well in practice. And um, I think those law of the, the law of averages are kicking in a little bit for him. When you look at this matchup, just defensively, what are the things you want to see strides in compared mm -hmm. to these last few games? Transition, urgency, um, blockouts, hits, defensive rebounds just finishing possessions. Um, and then we've got to guard the three at a really high level, of course, against a team that's as uh, efficient uh, from that area as anybody in the country. Yeah, it's easy to say uh, to 
defending the three point? Like, how hard is it to defend a three point line, especially when you have yeah. a team like this? That uh, well, it's really hard. If that's if that's if they're one dimensional, it's easier, you know. Um, but when when your your young men are, are being told uh, they can't shoot threes, we've you know we've got to run them off or we've got to make them bounce or whatever terminology each staff uses, you know, throughout our league. But they've also got an ability to attack off the bounce and then draw another defender and kick it for another three or that guy attacks a close out and they've got guys that can get to the rim and, and, and score layups. Um, yeah, it, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Yeah, they're, they're, it starts with uh, their ability to really space you, um, shoot threes from multiple positions. They offensive rebound it too as well, you know, which leads to long rebounds, which leads to more dagger threes off offensive rebounds. So they're a handful. Um, They've played a really, really tough schedule, um, so that they're they're better than their their record indicates. They're obviously a, um, a tournament team that can make a run. What sort of impact have you seen from the home crowd this season? Just how the players have been able to feel? You know, our guys are I think proud of of what you know the couple steps that we've taken in terms of trying to to rebuild this thing, and um, they're appreciative to our fans um, and the numbers that have come out and. The, the, uh, the volume in our building. Um, our last uh, our last home game was was it was it was rocking. You know the Tennessee game was at a level that I've never heard it. You know in the Steg uh, before, and uh, you know I've said that a few times. And we need that moving forward. We need a few more of those to give ourselves a chance. Coach, you've got Kenny Gaines and Charles Mann on staff who were part of that last tournament team here yep. in Georgia. How does their experience to help you build to eventually getting back to the tournament? Their relationships with the players are, are strong. Um, they, they've had opportunities to um, discuss you know, some of their past experiences here. Um, and they're, they're supportive of, of us too as a staff. And they, um, they get a lot of work done you know, around the office and, and they're helpful in practice. And, they're they're good models, you know, for our guys to uh, um, to make, you know, to, to reference, you know, for our staff to reference to our guys. You know, these guys, uh, they've they've gotten it done before. Ask them, you know, ask them how they did it, and ask them how, um, you know, their experiences are can can relate to your experiences. So they're always there for our guys. I spoke with them earlier, and they were saying that one of the biggest things that they saw that was similar was the camaraderie just between the team. Uh, how do you feel about this yeah. team? And you know, is there a lot of camaraderie between all these guys as a group? High level. Our guys really like each other. Um, and the challenge really for a bunch of guys that enjoy each other's company on the court and off the court as much as our guys do is to um, is to check each other at times, you know, as we're going through adversities in Gainesville and um, Florida goes on a 5 0 run and the whistle blows. You know, what, what are we doing at that point, you know, from a from a culture standpoint, are we coming together? Are we correcting things? Are we calling each other out uh, in a healthy manner? You know, are, are we able to coach each other? And we've had some, uh, we've had some, some, a, a lot of positives in that area. And then we've had some, obviously, when you're facing some adversities, where it leaves a little bit to be desired. And so, I think for for all teams in our sport, uh, until the ball stops bouncing for that particular team, it's. You're fighting for your culture every day, and, and you're fighting for your guys to be as connected as possible. You mentioned uh, defensive rebounds earlier. Have you guys ever ran too big in practice? <coughs> you a game? Uh, yeah, and we've actually played some 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 minutes this year that way. We've actually started some lineups that way. Um, weren't as good offensively, you know, trial and error throughout a season. Um, we, there's there's some positives to doing it, and there's there's some negatives to doing it. Really, however you um, tweak your rotation or, or your your starting lineup. What's a kind of on that note? RJ Sunahara has started a lot of games in a row, but he doesn't play a lot of minutes. Just what's your philosophy there regarding him specifically and your substitution pattern? And like that? Yeah, sure. Um, RJ stands for a lot of stuff that that we want to stand for as a program. Has great practices every day. Earn the right to start. Um, way back when, and um, it was in the middle of a, of a of a winning streak for us, and, and we were playing well, and it's not broken. You know why fix it? Um, but you know, moving forward, you know, we just faced a little adversity the other day, and 
So uh, we'll continue to reevaluate you know, who we're starting and who we're playing. Coach, Alabama has a similar pace of play to Florida. Where are you taking from that performance last week? We, you know, we played well offensively. You know, you scored 98 on the road in this league. You've done some good things, but uh, you can't give up that many. And um, Alabama's even better offensively. Um, so a lot of things that, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier. You know, our transition has got to be on point, our urgency, our level of communication, our attention to detail with, again, defending the three and blocking out and all those things. Um, it, we've got to play one of our best games, if not our best game, you know, to beat these guys. Um, Coach White. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Answer. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I was going to say, um, in a previous interview, you described Luke Kane as a level-headed player. Yeah. And with all of his development, how have you seen his role change throughout the course of the season? Um, he continues to gain confidence. He's become a better defender. Um, he's always been a very capable defender, an underrated defender. He's got, he's got, I've talked about it previously. He's got quiet toughness and quiet confidence. He's very competitive. Um, I think he's embraced uh, defending, understanding the importance of it at this level more so than last summer when it's, it's the typical progression that freshmen need to make um, as opposed to the offensive side, which is a lot easier for younger guys to embrace and be excited about. Uh, so, you know, he, he continues to improve and, and He's going to be a really good player. Any other questions? Coach? Coach, recently you mentioned um, the fans and their impact. And um, UGA did move the student section uh, court side on the floor. How big of an impact does the student section have just in general in games? Um, mm -hmm. How big of an impact do you think they'll have against the game for Southern? I think they'll, they'll be a, a big factor in what we're doing against Alabama and really against everyone moving forward. Um, I'm really appreciative to, again, our, all of our fan base that have uh, attended games in the past that may be sitting in a different seat. And I'm appreciative to our administration for, for making the change. Um, again, I, I, I've, I've, I've said it a few times, and I'll continue to say it, the game against Tennessee, I've been in, in, in the Steg for a long time. You know, I, I've had an opportunity to compete in there um, many, many times, and that's as loud as I've ever heard it. Uh, it was really loud again the other day, um, and so it's it's a big factor in our success, and it, it it really just puts us on par with with the rest of our league, right? If it's full and it's really really loud, you're just on par because the other 13 are the same way in our league. It just great arenas, great fan bases, and home court advantages throughout. Any questions? You good? Uh, Thank you. Way. Sorry, one more. Uh, is ball distribution a key concern um, heading into Alabama? Or are you going to kind of let the guards facilitate the offense themselves? Um, you know, it all starts uh, for the most part with our guards on, um, on a lot of possessions. Sometimes we'll play through our, our bigs. Russell Chu is actually coming off um, pretty consistently as of late, some, some good performances. So we'll play through him sometimes at the elbows and at the blocks. but. Um, our guards against uh, another really good defense, you know, are, are going to have to play well. We're making shots, making good decisions with orchestrating what we're doing. Our assist turnover ratio, um, uh, getting guys shots, getting guys in the right spots. Yeah, so it's uh, our guards are a focal point of what we do, of course. Thanks, coach.